Hello everybody, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Deborah DK. I'm a content creator, a businesswoman, and a researcher. I go by at DNDDYON on Twitter and Instagram. You can do well to follow me. Or the, there is a short link. You can see the Twitter icon and the Instagram icon alongside other shortcuts on the top of my page to your right. So you would see the ink, the short links that will take you directly to my social media handles and you can follow me there. So subscribe to my channel, share my contact with your friends. If you relate to what I am saying, drop a comment, like I am happy and always happy to hear from you. Today, I'm going to be talking about rejections. <laughs> All right, so today I'm talking about rejections. The title of my talk is, unfortunately, your application has been rejected. And these are the schools that I have received a rejection recently from Victoria University of Wellington, Wits University in association with NEST. Magill University, King's College, London. I feel sad, but that's that's the reality and the fact. So I want to talk about them. I just want to share. <laughs> I want to share them and just get over it. Yes, and just you know to let someone else out there know that it's not the end of the world. So let's move. Unfortunately, your application has been rejected. Let's take a look at the four recent PhD rejections I've gotten in my pursuit for a fully funded and or paid PhD. To put things in context, I'm not just randomly looking for PhD positions. I'm not going to pay anybody to do a PhD. I'm looking for PhD that is work, research, PhD, and my field is in communications. I'm looking at the use of social media, for political campaigns, social political engagement, protests, contests, activism, just living online and being a civil member of your society generally. So let's just take a rundown. This is this is the email I got from Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand. I made this application sometime last year. I got this response early this year. I, I made the application late last year. So the email is to advise that we have now assessed your application for doctoral study and or scholarship and regret to advise that you have been unsuccessful. Oh my God. <laughs> so when I first received this mail, I was indifferent basically because how I got the information, I didn't go out of my way to get the information. Someone who knew that I was in search of a university position in PhD sent me and said, hi, Victoria University of Wellington is open to receive applications from students around the world and there is funding involved. Take a look and if you qualify, you apply. I took a look and I loved it and I, put in an application and when this came through, I was sad, but it wasn't, I didn't think best now. I'm like, okay, probably it's not the best. So let's go to the next one, which University in South Africa in collaboration with NEST. So for this particular university, I didn't also go out of my way. So it was a friend, but it wasn't, we did, I didn't directly apply to University of Wits, South Africa. It was a program, NEST. NEST is Narrative Inquiry for Social or something. And you apply to the program, you apply to the school through the program. So the program is the funding body. And once it's like a fellowship. So once you are taking your you get admission into the school, they'll provide the admission. So as you're applying for the funding, you're applying to the school already. So I wasn't rejected by university 
of which waters run in South Africa. I could still go directly and make an application in the school if I want. And for this particular application, I was also, it was sent to me by a friend that knew about the opportunity and I received it. And I think I, I, think I sent this in in two days. I don't remember, but it was early this year that I sent this in. And when I, when I say early this year, around January, February, but I received this, I received the, the notification of my stance, I think in March. So this is, I just wanted to capture a bit of what I write. Twitter has increasingly become a platform for online users to engage in the social realities. Of course, I am talking about Nigeria. Nigeria. So I have a master's in African studies, cultural and media studies is my specialization. So I am looking at the impact of culture on media and the impact of media and culture. A little bit of my final interest is in the fact that in Nigeria, as if you are in Nigeria and you understand this, that culture and media is beginning to be intertwined. So you, especially the recent generation, they, you cannot see a young person that is not always online. A person will have an active online presence somehow, whether on the social media sites, on the online forums, somehow instant messaging apps is a way to stay alive in Nigeria. So, that's my interest. And I'm particularly interested in how it drives social political engagement, right? So I try to capture this and that was what I submitted. So this is a response. Thank you for your application for the next PhD scholarship 2021. There was a high level of competition for these scholarships. And we regret to inform you that your application was not successful. We wish you well with your studies and future plans. Thank you. So when I got this, I was, I was shocked. I was not sad, but I was shocked. I didn't expect the rejection. I was like, okay, I thought, because the narrative inquiry body, they are interested in African studies. I'm like, are you not interested in my area of scholarship, so I was kind of shocked because I expected a positive response from them, but when I didn't get it, I was shocked, but I moved on. So the next one right here did me dirty. I felt bad. That is my junior university. So I went out of my way for this one. I remember last year and I said that I want to apply to this school. I came across their media studies department and I'm like, I qualify. I have two publications. I can write a research statement. I can write an essay. I went out of my way and I did apply. And I remember asking, do I need a supervisor? And they said, no, you don't need a supervisor. You can just apply and we will take you. And I, I, this, this is, this is that school that I went out of my way to apply. And I, I put in, see, I didn't put definition of terms. I put in an abstract. I gave it a top P. I just tried to situate myself to give myself all the edges required. And then I said this, Application, this application was submitted in October and we were supposed to get in its response in March. And here it went, view your refusal letter. This was, I was so heartbroken. I was so heartbroken. I was sad. I was completely sad. I didn't believe this. I was like, what did I do wrong? Like, I can't believe this. I'm not sure I did anything wrong. <laughs> and I was so sad, but you know, this is the letter and part of what they said that got me pissed was the fact they said that uh, there is indeed in any given year a professor may accept only one MA or PhD student and some years 
none at all. And I'm like, you guys told me that having a supervisor was not important. So why did you make me to hang on to hope? Why did you make me to go through that process? Because when I reached out for a supervisor and I was not getting, I was ready to be like, okay, because one thing I have learned in the PhD journey is that you need a supervisor. So you need a supervisor to agree to supervise you. So I was like, so why? I felt misled, I felt sad, I felt heartbroken. I felt like I just needed my application fees. So I was so sad, I was so sad, but you know, that's fast and that's new. And again, if I can go back to Victoria of Victoria University of Wellington, I also asked them, do you need a supervisor? They said, I don't know that you can just submit directly. I've stopped believing these people. I don't think that you should submit directly. I think you should get a PhD supervisor before you proceed with your application. And the next slide is going to be approved to you. So when I saw this King's College London, I was like, yes. In 2017, when I, 2016, when I first started thinking about, should I go for a PhD, should I not go for a PhD? I went online and I searched the school that I would like to. So I used some metrics, I put in the course I wanted to do, and it was something around, it ended up being something around cultural and creative industries. And I was and I checked the schools that did it, and King College came up top. So King College became my dream school, like as far back as 2016. But when I saw the fees involved, I was like, you when am I gonna get this money? Then I was I was I was partly and mostly open to funding a PhD if I could get the funds. And I thought I didn't ask anybody, nobody knew about this, it was just me. And I was like, okay, how am I gonna get this money from when I calculated it for up to four years and what it I'm like, I don't even know where I'm gonna get the first fees, <laughs> I just left it. So I just wrote it down in the book and left it. So five years later, that's 2017, 18, 19, 20, It's five years later. So five years later, when I saw an opportunity for a student to apply, to be given a student she fully funded everything, came so I'm like, is this it? God, this could be, it. let me go for it. So I went for it early. So I started, I, but the trick was that I didn't find anything in the cultural and creative industry that I wanted. The opportunity was just three, one in, in leadership studies, one in digital humanities, but for the mathematical and the science, people that were looking at the engineering part of computer, not the human humanities and social science area that I was, experienced in researching and then there was the development studies i'm like oh i i really did not know i felt disqualified but i was looking at it again looking at it again and i now saw this african leadership center and i felt okay i could go for it i could just tweak my my research a bit to fit in so that was like i thought i did i don't like i tweaked my interest enough to fit into the leadership center's interest. So I talked about governance, governance leadership, right? And then I retained my interest in social media and Nigeria. And then I sent this in. Of course, this is just the screenshots. This proposal is like five pages. And I'm not going to send you to read, don't <laughs> ask me. So I sent it in. <sighs> Okay, let me finish the story before I go to the next bit. And I sent it in, and by the time I sent it in, I was like, you have just received rejections. You have to do something different. What can you do differently? I'm like, I have to find a supervisor. So after I sent in the admission, I went to look for a supervisor because I thought I would not miss this opportunity because I didn't find a supervisor. I wasn't paying an application fee anyway. And I also thought that while my application is in the system, let me go and look for a supervisor. So I searched, I sent mails to everybody in the department, in the center that I felt their research 
area was in my area one way or the other. And one responded that he was busy and he was not taking in any new student. Another responded that she was not in my area, unfortunately, even though I thought she was in my area. Then the third, who, who did not respond, but interestingly was corresponding somehow. I met him on Twitter and LinkedIn. I cornered him on LinkedIn and said, hey, are you sure you cannot look at my project and supervise and everything? He asked me to send him something. I sent him. And I'm telling you the truth, all of this was done in less than five days because it was five days to the end of application. All of this by the time I got the responses. So I started the application. I started preparing for this application, but I wasn't getting responses. And when the deadline was coming, the eagerness came upon me and I was sending, 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 sending. So by the time I, the supervisor read through what I sent, this is what he sent me. <sighs> After I read this, especially where he said, um, it also shows that you have not learned to read instructions. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I felt so, I felt so, <laughs> I don't know how to describe how I felt. I felt not just that I felt not enough. I felt like I didn't know anything. I was like, are you kidding me? In fact, at the point, this was the point I lost interest in the school. I was like, you know what? I don't want, I, I can't have a bad start. If somebody that is supposed to be my supervisor sending me this kind of mail, I'm better off not going for the admission. So I just lost to the admission. I was like, you know what, I'm done. I'm not even interested anymore. I still had to apply because for this particular school, you get the admission before you get the funding. So I said, my, my stuff is there anyway. And I didn't bother again. I didn't really bother, but a week in or two weeks in, I started getting mails from the school check, we check your, um, this asked for my certificates, they asked for reference, like that, there. I'm like, why are you stressing me in this school? I thought you people don't want me, but I still went ahead and submitted all those stuff. I was like, okay, probably there's somebody that's interested. So two days ago, or yesterday, I got this, thank you for your application to King's. Your application has now been carefully considered and regret for me that you have been unsuccessful in obtaining a place on the program. Uh, well, I was, no big deal. At this point, to be honest, I was not really bothered. The reason, because I felt that the worst that could happen to me happened to me with my job. So at this point, the only thing that made me feel bad was that I, I was, I believed that this was my opportunity to go to the school I dreamt of going in 2016. So, I felt like, yes, this is an opportunity. I imagine myself coming up to say, call me a king woman, do this, do that. I, I had all those, those dreams and desires. So that's what's been me with this. I felt like they stole away my dreams of shouting on top of the world that, yes, I had a dream five years later in Manchester. So that's what pain me with this. But besides that, that was what, Besides that, I was not so sad anymore. So we move. Yes, we definitely move. And the reason why we move is because, like I said, I, the worst hit for me was, the worst hit was definitely my chill because I spent, I submitted early and I felt bad because if they had told me that I needed a supervisor, I would have ensured to have gotten one. I really wanted to go to my chill because it was, it's one of the best schools in the world that is interested in media. And I, of course, I was like open to going to, um, what's that place <laughs> Some in Quebec, where Montreal, I was interested in going to Montreal because the spoke to language is French and English. I was like, okay, I'm going to, be very bilingual because I am supposed to be bilingual. In fact, I'm supposed to be multilingual. I'm supposed to have a very good knowledge of English, French, German, but I haven't used the French I learned in a long while. It's been, it's been seven years 
During eight years now, I learned French well. At some time I learned it, I could use it very well. I could do everything. But because I learned French and I stayed back in Nigeria, I just need somewhere to be to use it. I don't really need to learn it again. I know it, but I've not used it. So I just need a few conversations to start me up again on the path. So I felt this was going to be so good. So it was, it meant a lot of things. And of course, there is the PR option afterwards. So I was really looking forward to Matthew. So when Matthew hit me hard and I got that response in March, which was one of my birthday, I'm like, what kind of birthday gift is this now? I felt so sad, so, so sad and broken. But, and I was ready to give up. In fact, I gave up. I sent mail because I have a, I will call her a mentor who, a PhD mentor who helps me reach through my essays, vet them before I submit. And then, of course, my two referees that I always disturb. And I do, I sent them mails and then sent my family members that helped me with application fees. I'm like, I'm, I'm thankful for your assistance so far. That was after my due. I'm thankful for your assistance so far. I didn't get in and I just want to say thank you for everything. <laughs> they laughed at me. <laughs> my God, they so laughed at me. They laughed at me and they told me, hey girl, come up it. It's more rejection. Move on. I thought I wasn't going to move on, but it was as if God wanted me to move on. So that week, I be not that week, the next month or before for the end of March, I saw the King's College London and it brought so much joy to me. I'm like, yes, another dream school. So I, I didn't give up. So I just gave up for a couple of weeks and came back. And thankfully, all my people are there with me. They're supporting me. I keep on doing this. Go for it. I've, these are not just the schools I've applied. I'm expecting responses from at least two. There is one more I am going to apply that I know of. But again, I'm open to more um, people, some more opportunities. People send me opportunities. I open them if they are aligned with my interest, I apply. If they are not, I don't. And there is a particular one which I am not even going to be bothered too much. I've sent mails for, for prospective supervisorship. No one has responded. I'm going to go ahead and send more mails. If I don't get any response, I won't bother myself applying. That's just it. I'll just go with those that respond to me. I have people that correspond for me. I believe that if you, if you correspond is a good sign. It means that, okay, you're having a conversation. Even if I don't meet up, let there be communication. There, there should be no coldness from the beginning. If there, if there is no communication from the beginning to the end, it's a PhD, it's not a master's. You need to keep communicating with you. So if that is not working fine, then I wouldn't know. So that brings me to the end of today's conversation. I hope you learned something or you were entertained or you just enjoyed my information. Just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Drop a comment, like it, share it. If you have anybody that is struggling with rejection, share with the person, tell the person, hey, calm down, it's not only you. Somebody has been rejected for this. I didn't have other rejections, please. Notify me, I'd like to know what's up, what your story is and everything. I want you to always be in my space. So please subscribe, click the notification button. Let's go to this channel. You don't know what next I'm gonna share, but it's always going to be around business, research and content that interests me. Some of the content that interests me, travel, right? Culture, like you really don't know, so just stay tuned. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. And have a beautiful day.